Hey guys, what's up? This is Rapid, and I'm bringing you another scrim. This time it's between Team Lazura and Reflex. So I'm uh, going to start off by introducing Reflex. We have Prolly running Cassiopeia, going uh, AP mid. A lot of Mortis in the jungle on Sejuani. Noobish on uh, Sona, going bot lane. Uh, support, Arknight, going to be, well... I think he'll be there eventually. Yeah, he's uh, he actually needs to buy items. There we go. So Arc Knight 14, running Riot Girl Tristana, and then Rumble played by Valkyrie, going top lane. Lazura and uh, Le yeah, it looks like Lazura is actually just, just going to go around here. And this is one thing we see is really really popular by a lot of teams. They will just come around here to the tri bush, and they have great positioning for bot lane. They can steal the double golems because they are right there. But one thing Reflex has done to counter this is they have warded their red bush, and they're just baiting. Oh my goodness, this is so smart! <laughs> they're right on top of the warden. Here they go. Here comes out the initiation. Ted Stickles getting burst out almost immediately. First blood goes down, but a lot of Morris looks like yeah, a lot of Morris will fall. Talandra is in a bad, bad position right now. He will go down. And uh, so much damage being dished out by the Jester, except Arknight jumps over the wall, forcing the flash by the Jester. So that is two for one. Three for one, actually. And, oh my goodness, one kill apiece on Sona Cassiopeia and Rumble. And the only kill for Reflex going down to Talandra. I mean, for uh, Lazura going on Talandra. So already a massive advantage. That was excellent bait. Oh my goodness, that level one was so ridiculously good. So after all that excitement, let me go ahead and re introduce Team Reflex. We have Atomic, a new member running Janna. That is his main, I believe. I've seen him play that a lot, almost exclusively. So he's on Janna, very good Janna. And specifically, he's a very good Janna against Tristana. Known to, uh, you know, known for kind of knocking her up when she jumps in. Has a lot of uh, great CC timings. Anubis uh, harassing Digester a little bit, actually splitting his harass, hitting... Atomic with a power cord there. I'm not sure if that's exactly what you want, but he's gonna take the brunt of this damage as he can just pot and actually went for four wards. <laughs> he bought four wards, the fairy charm, and boots. Holy crap. I guess that's what happens when you go ahead and uh, pick up early kills. So that's gonna be really rough for them to deal with, even already using his health pot. So if they're gonna let me, I'm gonna get through these introductions. Chaos Ted Stickles running uh, Jungle Lee Sin, going for some invades. Actually, no, he may find a lot of Morris there. And actually, he is in a really bad position. He's gonna go in here on Brawly. He actually hits the Q. The burst coming off from Sushi, but uh, from Slush, actually. And uh, is probably gonna go to actually a lot of Mortis is there. Probably picks up the kill on Slush. Then falls immediately, but uh, Ted Stickles is not in a good place. He gets the cripple off, but will the dash come up for him? A lot of Morris in time. Actually, no, Ted Stickles is going to get out of there. Level 2, he's actually going to heal up a little bit. Off means hit level 3, and he could have dashed out of there a little bit different a uh, position and maybe could kill a lot of Morris. Yeah, he's jumping in and actually, yeah, then jumps right back out. So excellent play there from Ted Stickles, bringing it, uh, well, it's still a 2 kill lead, but at least making that 1 for 1. That is two kills, however, mid lane on Cassiopeia, so we'll be looking to probably to show us uh, what you can do with some of that early game pressure. Shield from Janet is going to block huh, most of that. And uh, one thing I'd like to point out is we do see Flash CV run on Noobish, so that's not, not really common. Usually you want to see, uh, well, at least nowadays you see that heal. And actually, a lot of Morris. Coming in there and actually stealing that blue will probably turn around. No, a lot of Morris looks like he is just going to go down. Actually, probably is turning around, but I'm not sure if that is a little bit too late. Ted Stickles actually jumping to that ward, but is he going to hit the Q on a lot of Morris? He does. Ted Stickles picks up a lot of Morris, but probably is actually going to kill Slush once again. And uh, yeah, Digester and Ted Stickles are actually in a really bad place right now. I believe did Arc Knight jump in there? Yes, he did. So won't be able to follow up with another jump. They could try, no, they could not dragon right now. And actually, Ted Stickles hits Noobish right away, picks up that kill, easy peasy right now, and uh, forces Arknight. Wow, there's a little bit of a screen jump to jump away. Wow, excellent play there by Ted Stickles. Atomic getting the slow off, so preventing any sort of aggression there. And uh, Ted Stickles actually just gonna go back to base. He is three and one right now, going double Dorans into Boots, Pots, and Ward. So, just going for that solid, solid early game advantage. And Dorans are kind of the item of choice. People are kind of realizing that they offer so much utility that uh, it's kind of hard not to buy them. 
Valkyrie getting busted up by Talandra. Talandra's actually, ooh, Valkyrie doesn't run on mana, but he does run on health, and he is down to about, yeah, 600, it says 600, but I believe that is, actually, I still had Sirstana selected there. I'm retarded. Anyways, probably got fed blue buff, and uh, Slush is missing that, but the uh, great thing about Gragas is he is kind of self-generating. We hold these truths to be self-generating, along with mana and health, apparently, so it will be pretty even top laid. Both very push-heavy lanes. As, uh, yeah, Talandra has not had to go back yet. Actually, yeah, he did. He actually picked up the fairy charm for his, uh... Ah, sorry. Had to, uh, take care of some business really fast. Meanwhile, uh, a lot of Mortis. Counter jungling even harder, except that that's his own jungle, and uh, it's a little bit hard to do. If you can counter jungle your own jungle, then like, mad props right there. The Jester's actually in a really dangerous place. He gets harassed by Nubish. Nubish actually has a power cord, so they may time that with the Tristana jump. Bust that off onto the Jester. Will we see him jump in? Ted Sickles is waiting in the eaves. I do not believe they saw him jump in there. So will, when will he get yeah, that? Signals to Jester to get out of there. Ted Signals is on a rampage, picking up that kill. Will Nubish fall as well? There is no mana, but he does have the flash up, so did not want to burn that. Protects to Jester a little bit. Jester could actually go down to Nubish if he actually had mana. But the 5 to 5, the score is even 4 and 1 on Ted Signals, making this a tied game. So, wow. Probably actually nuking himself right there. I'm not sure if that was intentional. But, uh, yeah, just going to be a lot of harassment. That damage reduction on Slush is just so, so good at protecting against that dot damage. Valkyrie actually coming up behind Talandra, wanting to trade, but Talandra will not have any of it. The Philosopher's Stone already complete, and, uh, wow, Talandra is looking to be in a great shape top lane. A lot of Mortis, however, has side vision on Ted Stickles. Ted's pulling it away, they're pinging, they know he's there, so they're just gonna like, let that reset and uh, maybe converge here. Valkyrie actually pulling it down, they know something's up, so Ted Sickle, actually, wow, Loud of Morse missing that slow, but Ted Sickle jumps on to, wow, he gets out of there, he narrowly dodges the ult. Is he gonna live? No, the last tick of poison from Prolly picks that up, that is so bogus. Wow, how do you do that? So calculated. Apparently, and actually Taladra, will he be the next to fall? Has the perma slow, but cleanses out of it almost immediately. The CV goes down, and he's forced to flash away, so face checking that bush not actually working out there from Taladra. Probably is brought really low by Slush. So we may see a little bit of aggression. Actually, no, Slush is gonna come up here and try to help a lot of Morris, but a lot of Morris just Jumps over that wall, that is one of the strengths of Sejuani. She does have that movement, which is one of the only good things about her. Like, she's got her ult, and she's got a dash, and that's about it. So... Ah, this is why you remember to bring water ahead of time. Ted Sigal's gonna try it for an identical counter jungle. Pretty sure I screwed up, like, eight of those words. But anyways, they're gonna try to pick up this blue buff... And, uh, yeah, Loud of Mortis is gonna try to contest this, but, uh, Greg is dashing over that wall, and Loud of Mortis is not in a good place, but Prolly is coming back, freshly bought, already has Hextech boots and double Doran, so that 4 and 1 score is definitely paying off for her. And, wow, yeah, she is, she is so fed right now. Actually, Loud of Mortis, wow, yeah, Slush dashing out of there as fast as he can, still has the poison ticking on him, so that was an unfavorable trade. And uh, does have blue buff, but with only boots and door answering, he's going to be at a severe disadvantage. And actually, Lada Morris looks to counter jungle even more, but uh, Slush will not have any of it. Probably is there to assist. Slush forced to flash out of the way. Ted Sickles will not be able to complete that blue. He's going to try to keep it from regening, but uh, unable to do that. So right now, yeah, he wants to go in there and fight, but right now, Prolly is so, so fed. What are they going to do about this? Noobish is coming up from bot lane, leaving Arknight there by himself. We're going to see if they can finally get this blue buff. Four members for Lazura are there. The knockup coming out from Atomic and the barrel from Gragas just zoning probably out of there. A lot of Mortis wants to get out of there as well. Knows he has that. Wow! Would have gotten ulted by Gragas if that ult hadn't, uh, or if, if he hadn't dashed out of there 
in the nick of time. Meanwhile, Taladra, just kind of AFK farming top, does not have teleport, but does have that global ult, just allowing him to have such a, uh, well, global presence around the map. I'm pretty sure that was like eight redundancies in one. Probably doing what Cassiopeia's do, getting that side range from the Q, and uh, then nuking down the blue rays, so... Ted Stickles is going to have to go clear up his jungle affairs a little bit more. Let's see what Valkyrie has going on. He already uh, ran himself into the red zone. Started with Cloth. Has uh, Boots of Speed already well on his way to that Woda. Meanwhile, we already see... Actually, I would have thought we'd see Woda completed. Ted Stickles is going to come in here on Prolly. Actually, Slush is zoning Prolly out a lot. And wow, Ted Stickles could get so much work down here. But I do believe... Was he actually spotted? No, those wars have gone down. And they may actually be looking for a dive. Greg is so tanky so early. Actually, yeah, went back and bought triple Dorans. So yeah, triple Dorans into a uh, Rod of Ages is what you want to see if you're going that heavy tank, Gragas. Also getting tons of AP along with that. And actually, here comes it, Ted Sickles. They're going to go for that dive. Gets pinned against the wall. Gragas is going to try to get this off. And actually, Slush picking up the kill on probably Will Ted Sickles be able to jump out of there? Yeah, jumps out. Plenty of protection being brought really low there. But uh, the dive was successful. So 4-2-1 and one now for Ted Sickles. 1-3, and three, actually bringing Slush back into this game. We check the gold count. Actually, yeah, he's gonna need to get out of there. Atomic's going up to Ward. <sighs> Throws down the pink and dragon. Wow. That's what happens when you cast games all day long. You get a little uh a little tired. Plus, you know, GSL tonight? What what am I gonna do? No idea, but it does give me this sultry caster voice, which I'll be trying to uh use to my fullest. Speaking of using things to their fullest, the Jester having, uh, actually, yeah, Atomic, only having, uh, Boots and Philo Stone. I say only, but I guess that's pretty good for a support so far. It is a 0 and 2 so not pulling that, uh, Kurtoki dishing out the early feeds. Actually, uh, shout out to Kurtoki. Hella good. Actually, the Jester dashing in on Arctan, I'm not sure that was a good idea. He just had a really, really horrible trade right there, and actually, yeah... Somebody is really low. Talandra picking up that kill from another successful gang. Not paying attention to the map. Because I was focusing on dashing in and stuff down there. Which was obviously more important. Ted Stickles and Slush are actually going to circle around there. And uh, right now a lot of Morris is in the danger zone. If they, uh, if they went up there towards Dragon. That would be really, really painful. For Sejuani. She's actually going to hold the lane in place of rubble but she does not do enough damage to talandra actually yeah he is actually boom right now so he won't be able to fight back as much but he does have that gsb passive proccing red buff on latimoris is actually doing a lot of damage that's true damage oh he slush going in there tongue twisters all day and uh, checking for the raise, throws down a ward, but uh, now that does allow them to spot Prolly. So they have positioning on here. We're going to see if Ted Stickles is going to come in here and try to get a little bit of something done. The dash is used on Gragas, so Slush is going in there. Maybe he thought Ted Stickles was a little bit closer, but uh, using the CDR on that dash to maximum effectiveness, it only has a six second cooldown. And actually, bot lane was where we saw a lot of damage. Atomic and Digester just getting absolutely manhandled by Arknight here. Arknight definitely having the dominant CS 100 to only 87, so coming out about 20 CS ahead. Talandra getting nuked down under his turret. He has regen quite a lot of that mana, but cannot just, just can't trade favorably against Va Valkyrie. His shield is just such a good anti-trade mechanism. Plus, when you combine that with the Flame Spitter, just makes trading with him so so hard. Slush doing a good job dodging probably Q's under turret. But bot lane, a gang from Ted Stickles. Will we see that work out? Atomic having to flash out. And actually, Atomic not providing enough of a jump for Ted Stickles. He goes down there. And Arc Knight, Nubish, and Latimora is just doing so much work there. Prolly is actually here as well. But will she meet up Slush in the bush? They are both going to face check the bush. Slush dashing out of there, not getting stunned, but he will get slowed. And actually, Prolly is going to get in there. The Ignite goes down onto Prolly, but the jump comes in from Latimora's. That was actually Arknight jumping in there. I just said the first name that came to mind. And 8-7 right now. That did pull it away from Reflex. And more importantly, 
allowed them to get the first dragon of the game at 15 minutes, so... Six minutes from now, we'll have another dragon fight, but this one going uncontested to Reflex, so... Following up on that win, bot lane transitioning into a dragon, and they're... They may want to get blue, but uh, first, Ted Sickles got a face check dragon and take out that pink ward with a pink ward of his own, so... At least Reflex isn't getting greedy. Like, one of the things that is the bane of all successful teams is that once you do something good, you try to follow it up with too many good things. Like, you take a turret, you try to go for another turret. CV is going down, so they will have a timer on this. But yeah, like I was saying, Reflex, good job to just get out of there. A lot of course is going to take out Wolves and then feed yet another blue buff to Prowly. I think he's had like four blue buffs this game. Probably only three. Because they did take the, the blue buff from Lazira over there. So top lane turret did go down as Talandra had to go back or face the impending peril of having to deal with... Wow, what is this nonsense? The Bloodthirster. I didn't realize there was a the in front. But now with that Bloodthirster, he has to move out of that ult. Force a flash away even under the ignite. He's going to go ahead and ult himself. He is so low right up with a flash coming in from Valkyrie. Picking that up. With the Electro Harpoon and or an auto attack. I did not check that out. But, uh, yeah, wow. Yeah, you're not beefy enough as a, uh, unless you go tank plank. CV actually going down. Red buff is picked up by Ted Stickles. He will jump in here. Wow, misses the Q on Lotta Morris. Lotta Morris just going to jump over the wall and actually aggroing Baron. So will Baron pick up the kill? Oh my goodness, if Baron had crit right there, Lotta Morris would have gone down accidentally. Wow, yeah, you can aim that. So... Uh, not a very good job of not aggroing Baron. Right now, Valkyrie doing so much work, and I'm missing a whole lot of action bot lane as the Jester forced once again behind his turret. And yeah, Arknight, his favorite champion, is Tristana. Something like a 70% win rate with that guy, so... Well, it's actually a girl, but yeah. About that. So their turret is under a siege right now. It may go down at any second. Arknight actually taking one turret shot, but just baiting out the Jester. They want to make something happen there, but I don't think that's going to be possible. 9 to 7 is actually the score in kills. We'll see if anything happens bot lane. It does look, not look like either jungler is in position for that to happen. Wow, Slush in a real hurry to get out of there. Still gets hit by the initial poison shot. I believe that's uh, the W... Applies poison instantaneously, or like before the animation hits the ground, so that might have been what caught Slush, and yeah, probably just taking yet another Blue Wraith, and even picking up one of the bonus ones over there. If Mr. Kitty decides to jump in on this mic action, this will be a little bit exciting, but uh, he's being good right now, so nothing to worry about. Probably actually getting uh, taking a lot of damage, but he is the one currently possessing the Wota. No sustain out for Gragas, just going for that massive penetration build. SNI actually been back to buy in a while, so he is sitting on, yeah, 1,500 gold. Gank's bot lane going off, and uh, yeah, Digester is hella low. Dead Stickles waiting in case they want to dive. Arknight capable of jumping in there, but they do know that Slush is waiting in the wings. And uh, yeah, they're just going to go ahead and back out, so Ted Stickles protecting Digester a lot. And he is really the force to be reckoned with right now on Lazura. 5-2. The score for probably right now he's out there warding so many aggressive wards right now there there that one just dying in the top tri bush but even going out from noobish so if we go ahead and check the ward coverage put this on blue yeah you see how much ward coverage they actually have nothing in the top river but plenty of wards actually nothing on dragon either so the wards are going to be on all the buffs they have one there for uh, for like baron positioning and uh, to protect the raids and uh, let me just switch it back to all mode because it looks like we are going to have a little bit of action here. Slush ulting to push Valkyrie back into the wall. It does, does not look like it did that much damage. I said giant spell just giving Valkyrie so much health with the Wota completed. That is going to be double Wota right now on Prolly's team. So I say Prolly's team, but it's actually you know, collectively reflex. Slush trying to kill the creeps fast enough, but just not able to do that. The ult goes off, and uh, is that going to signal the initiate? No, it's just going to push them off that tur turret. Like a turret, the way I pronounce it. Anyways, yeah, Atomic uh, waiting in there. I thought he was going to start up a cyclone just to get positioning. Uh, I'm sure they know. Yeah, they do know 
that Reflex is in that bush, so uh, likewise, Reflex knows that they can know for sure, because that Oracle is going to allow them ward positioning. They do not see that ward up there in the bush. I did not know I could ping that, but uh, high fives to Riot allowing us to ping in OBS mode. A lot of words clears that out, but right now, 10 Sniggles getting caught. He is the only Fed member, so once he gets chunked like that, there's nothing that Lazurus, if I can pronounce the name correctly, is going to be able to do. Leeson missing the Q, but does get sight of Sona in that bush. Valkyrie actually is just going to go back. He is sitting on, yeah, 14k gold. So he's going to go back and uh, work on his Rylize a little bit more. Picks up both of the other components. Not quite enough to uh, pick up the whole thing, but positioning around blue buff is probably going to be able to pick this up. So much AP, it actually it does go to Lazura. So much action. Graves ult going off to Jester. Perfectly positioned in the back, but Arknight popping masterfully onto 10 Stiggles. Picking up that kill. Looks like the Jester will fall at the hands of Prolly, and they will just uh, go ahead and back out there. So... Wow, actually a really good job by Atomic there, getting out, taking a little bit of damage, but uh, able to get out there, and once again, after a fight at blue buff, a dragon's coming up, and this is these are those mid-game objectives you really want to complete. Uh, and it uh, looks like uh, Reflex has figured out a really nice pattern. They're going to contest blue buff, and then if they win blue buff, then they take dragon as well, because they've already won the fight, so they're pressing their advantage in a defensive direction, going from blue buff down there to dragons so if they lose blue buff or if they can't get positioning on it then they'll go back down and then fall back on contesting dragon so they'll know that having harassed at blue buff Lazura would have been low and even if they had gotten it they would then be faced with a more advantageous position at dragon so it's kind of a win-win situation and uh, definitely another advantage for the blue side you know as the metagame develops we see a lot more uh, a lot more strategies coming out and initially it was thought that okay well you know each team has the you know their own advantages top lane can pick up double golems up here but uh, bot lane it was really thought is a little bit more adv advantageous when you feed that uh, double golems to the AD carry but now with uh, with this interesting strategy here from reflex utilizing the blue buff to dragon strat that's us uh, showing a little bit more of an advantage for the blue team just posturing around here Will we see actually Valkyrie go down? Yeah, Ted Stickles picking up another successful gank, ghosting it through those bushes, but now they gotta get out of there fast as they know that the entire team from Reflex is gonna get out. Ted Stickles just being ignored. They are gonna go on to Talandra. Will he be able to get out of there? The slow goes off. Does he have cleanse up? No, he had used that. Yeah, he already cleanses, so I'm not sure if that is exactly what he wanted to do. He's gonna crit, actually, Talandra. That might not have been a crit, but uh, probably zoning out Atomic there. Nubish picking up Hell Awards, even has two more in the inventory. Probably picking up yet another Blu ray. I think every single one of them have gone down to Cassiopeia. But now they're sieging the second turret mid, and uh, I don't think there's anything that Reflex, that uh, Lazura can do against Reflex right now. It is 11 to 8, 5k gold advantage. And uh, just with a general chunkiness here, even without. A lot of Morris, or even without Valkyrie, the turret does go down, and this will signal a counter push from Reflex. Did Jester actually AFK pushing that bot turret? Will he be able to 1v1 a really, really fed Rumble? That Rumble is sitting at 2 2 and 2 versus uh, Did Jester's 0 1 and 3, 170 farm to 150. So things are shaping up, but uh, will he actually get baited in there? Arc Knight in a horrible position, and the entire team from Lazura is actually going to get. On here, on to Valkyrie. Will they actually chase? They could chase that all the way, but that is signaling the dragon free and clear. For Reflex, will they be able to three-man this? Probably is really fed right now. Hell AP sitting at 271, but a lot of Morris is really low. They're just going to trade tank this, and I'm not sure if that's a good decision. They can't They can't do this. There's no physical way they can do it. Probably even offering to tank this. It's getting hella low, but probably just got chunked there, so... Yeah, this is an excellent opportunity for Ted Stickles to jump in there. He jumps in there, gets petrified, gets ulted, so there's not a whole lot he can do there. Nubish goes down. Will Ted Stickles go down? No, he is sustaining. He gets hit in the poison, but he gets saved right there. And that is a Baron buff against Reflex for Lazura right now. That turned the game around 11 to 12. Absolutely epic, horrible decision-making there from Reflex. Picking up, actually giving that 
That's uh, Baron to Lazura. They're just going to be able to AFK push right now. Four members of Reflex down. Only Valkyrie left alive to defend this turret. He's not going to be able to do everything. Anything is his ult up. No, it is down for 17 seconds. Two turrets going down. And uh, wow, they're actually backing out right now. I feel like they could push in to the second turret. But that's, that's what I was saying earlier. You don't get greedy. Once you're ahead, you get more ahead. But in an opposite direction by being defensive. It's, it's like anti-artosis advice. Anyways... Uh, yeah, Atomic running up top lane, just gonna go ahead and back, and if we check the gold right now, yeah, almost 2k for every single member of Lazura, so, wow, epic Baron Steel, pulling the gold count back to about 500 gold difference, one death is the difference, and four turrets, so, so even, that was ridiculous, the game was solidly in Reflex's favor. But with an ill-advised Baron attempt and uh, Baron steal plus four kills for Reflex. And Tentacles didn't even die that time. He dove in there and just sustained with so much lifesteal. If we check out his build real fast, we see that... Uh, actually, let me focus on some action going on right here. I'll focus on the man himself. Already has Warmogs, Triple Dorans, MR Boots, and a Heart of Gold. So, combining the best of every single wards, having the, uh, the early game advantage from those door ends, but the late game advantage from picking up that heart of gold and just the general oh my goodness this is the best item in the game warmogs build so do we see an oracles yeah atomic is sitting pretty with an oracles and right now yeah the jester getting back into the action so five men are here for lazura they are grouped up quite nicely actually atomic way out of position Flush getting cut way out, and this is going to signal a full odd retreat from Lazura. Most likely, Arcdite could jump over that wall to get a favorable trade. Lazura actually needs to get out of here, wait till they have another advantage. But uh, that Baron buff is going to allow them enough of uh, enough of an advantage to not just totally die right now, but they know red buff is the next advantage or next uh, objective. So they're going to go over there, pick that up, easy peasy. So a uh, red buff on the Jester. That is going to be. A really nice advantage, but uh, Slush just face checking that bush for the loss, and 12 to 12 are the kills right now, so 40.2 to 39.8, 400 gold difference right there. But uh, Reflex is gonna change that really fast by picking up a dragon. That's gonna pull it about a thousand gold, 1300 gold advantage right now, but really it's about the items. Death Cap and uh, Hella AP there for Gragas. We check his AP right now. He is sitting at 369 versus Cassiopeia, who's at 256. Does that have a hat? Not even going for a hat. She says, I have plenty of damage with that Q nuke and poison utility, plus her ult just scales so, so well. Top is pushing, gonna get some damage on that turret from Creeps, and uh, that is gonna give Lazura positioning on Reflex right now. So now that uh, Slush is back in the action, actually Talandra is a little bit lagging behind. He's gonna go for Trinity Force after Bloodthirster into Elysia's Miracle. So wow, once he gets that Trinity Force, that's gonna substitute for what you'd see on a lot of tank planks going for that Atmogs build. But he's going for a much higher damage build, so uh, we'll see how that plays out. He's not tanking enough to sustain through a lot of bursts like probably has to dish out and even Arknight being a bursty champion so Slush is just gonna try to zone out a lot of more so once again he's not gonna get caught there is excellent ward positioning by Atomic so doing a great job at positioning even aggressive wards so right now Reflex thinks they might have an advantage and you know they, they probably do the farm is a little bit better for them they do have a gold advantage as well so Atomic not able to ward that bush, a good choice just to go ahead and throw down the ward there. He'd like it in that bush, and in fact he may actually go into that bush and clear that out. Talandra face checking, hella risky right there, but they did see Reflex loop back around. This is so close. I don't even believe this. This is like solidly, solidly in favor of Reflex. And then after that absolutely epic Baron confrontation, Things are so much more even, and yeah, just a lot of wave clearing, a lot of positioning. That was absolutely the longest barrel I've ever seen go out from Gragas. And maybe when you combine that with the dash, things work a little bit differently, but... The Jester preventing yet another bear, uh, Wraith Steel from Crawley, taking that for himself. They're pinging over onto the Wraith. They want to go around there, 
Atomic has been doing a great job clearing wards. So they have a solid ward advantage right now. And that is going to signal the counter push as uh, Reflex is just backing out. Their bots are taken down in ninja style by the Jesters. So able to pick that up. Whereas uh, the uh, secondary layer of turrets is still up for Lazura. With the exception being that middle turret. So one turret advantage there for Lazura. And they're just going to take whatever advantages they can right now. They're going to loop around and uh, try to reposition for the next Baron. I don't think it'll be up for a while, but they are going to move that direction. They actually must have that timed and are going to get into an advantageous position for that Atomic. Just clearing out the wards. He's going to go check Baron for wards. There are none there right now. And if we check out the vision right now, for Lazura, they have Hellavision bot lane, even aggressive wards all over the place. But uh, if we check the vision for Reflex, the only ward they have out right now is right there, and then they have their own jungle warded, so so defensive right now. And uh, that's a big change that we've seen as the game has progressed, as now Reflex are in the defensive position. Argonite are going to jump over there and just farm up. And right now, it's all about the next engage. Rumble actually doing hella dancing right there. Um, but uh, have a look at the gold count right now. It looks like Arknight and Prolly are going to go back and buy... Probably actually going to farm up for that hat, or at least wanting the best friend wand, or blasting wand. No, it's the counterpart to the blasting wand. What do you call that? Uh... I'm just going to go with BF wand. I'll, th I'll, I'll think of that. I'm just having, like, the greatest mind block you've ever heard of right now. But, uh, yeah, second Baron of the game. Going to go mostly uncontested. Will they actually be able to pick this up? Lottomorris is waiting in the eaves. It's going to run out. And actually, yeah, Lazure is just going to back out there. Not making the same mistake Reflex did. They're just going to go around here. And I'm not sure what that ult was there from Valkyrie. Um, Yeah, maybe he just didn't want to get jumped on. But that was that was really bad. Now, uh, one really game-changing ult. I believe it's even called, like, the Equalizer. Yeah. So the Equalizer not equalizing anything right now. And even unequalizing things as that is one I, I've belagered that pun like a million years too long the jester right now laughing it up no fuzzballs in the room but I guess I guess you could count Sejuani she's kind of fuzzy actually her boar is fuzzy I don't know about uh, Sejuani actually <laughs> never mind wow a great cue going out there by Ted Stickles giving them a positional advantage by giving them sight on Lada Morris they're just gonna try to ward that bush up and ever so carefully, this is like nuke pushing in StarCraft. It's just a slow and steady wins the race. Are they going to start it? It's basically whoever initiates first is going to uh, is gonna win. And doing barrier right now would put Lazura at a, a disadvantage. If Reflex chose to initiate, Reflex just looping around there, and right now, this is what they want to do. This is very aggressive, and right now, Digester is in a horrible position. He's getting get cut out, most likely, by the ult from Lottomoris. Yeah, he flashes out, but a five-man ult, actually four-man ult, double ult coming out, and this is horrible for Reflex right now. They are going to get bursted down. Prawley is going to go down. Arknight jumping on the 10 sickles. That's not what you want to happen. Gets exhausted almost immediately. Atomic goes down, but uh, that assist allowing Arknight to jump away once again. That was an absolutely horrible fight from Reflex. It looks like Arknight is going to go down. Yeah, Digester picking up that kill. And the old... They got so greedy and that flash out by Digester was perfect. Oh my goodness. Flashed out and just got the minimal stun at a great distance from uh, from Siswani. And then the Sonal going out as well. And with both of those AoE stuns out of the way, there was just no initiate. There was no... AoE ults left on uh, on Reflex. The Rumble ult was down with both of those ults down. It was basically three moves to four, and that's going to signal a Baron successfully completed by Lazura. Will they actually go back and buy? Will they choose to press their advantage? Two down still for Reflex. Valkyrie is going to do his very best to, to uh, defend this turret against the Digester, but the Digester already has the Phantom Dancer and uh, the Infinity Edge, so he is looking to... Oh my goodness, look at how much gold they have left. 2k left on Ted Stickles. He's even going to pick up the Baron, or the uh, Dragon, after the Baron for even more gold. 2k on Digester, so it looks like uh, Lazura is just going to go back, buy, and solidify their item advantage for the next fight. One of the things uh, that uh, separates pros from noobs a lot of the time is what they do with their items. See, a lot of people, like, at the lower level, 
will try to get the best item. They think that because they can buy hella good items, that's the goal of League of Legends. No, it's about doing the most with the items that you have. That's why CS is so important, because you want every little advantage that you can get. And if you can get the item advantage, great. But uh, that's the reason Dorans are popular with pros and not with lower level, or lower elos, is because they recognize the utility of uh, just scaling so strongly. And if you can get any sort of item advantage, you just make do with what you have. You don't draw the game out so you can get that really cool item you want. Right now, an attempted to initiate for Lottamoris probably, yeah, backs off. Not a good idea. And Digester right now is really kind of... Uh, Swinging out to the wings, he's going to go up and press bot lane as uh, this is the pinnacle of team communication. You signal your team to be defensive as you split push, so he's going to push down top lane while the rest of his team defends middle. Probably is waiting there to counter push, but uh, Digester's just, gonna be just going to push that up. And uh, if we check out the items, yeah, he went ahead and picked up that last whisper, so that is going to be absolutely crucial as we see a Negatron Cloak even built here on Tristana, so she's going to go for a Cleanse Sash probably. And uh, yeah, Digester just picking up that turret free and clear, and it's just going to reunite for his team. And that was, yeah, a free turret there for the Digester. It's 4-6 to six right now for turrets, and Lazura is pulling this out. This is absolutely incredible to watch. Focusing on the man himself, 4-1 and one right now after a really bad start. Gonna killed there in that initial confrontation, and uh, now, wow. Pulling it back, even a Void Staff on Gragas. So much neg negation, that is, of uh, up resistances from the AP carry. Uh, from both carries, actually. A lot of Morris even jumping back out of there. So right now, Lazura is stalling, or is sieging on this turret. Will the positioning be great enough from Arknight? I actually forced to jump back over the wall instead of walking back around. I'm not sure if that is the greatest idea. Now there's only three moves left on Tristana. It'll cool down in about 8 seconds here, 4 seconds actually, so half as much as I thought. But uh, Digester actually got chunked there pretty hard by walking into the poison, so we're going to see if uh, now they're going to choose to be a little bit more defensive. So much Cassiopeia poke, and actually Tristana is going back. She will complete most likely her QSS, actually completing the last Whisper instead of a QSS, so going for that offensive build. She is not too far behind, almost hitting 300 farm, so uh, tied up there with Digester, so so much positioning going on. Right now for both teams, it's all about who gets a more favorable engage. Both AoE stuns are up for yeah, for Reflex. Man, this is absolutely killing my voice, but I don't mind uh, sacrificing that on the altar of esports. As this is absolutely ridiculous game. Killing off that outer ward for Reflex. Uh, actually, wow! Sushi, or Slush rather, just got chunked there by Tristana. So much damage and zero defensive items right now. Just relying on that 15% damage reduction, chunking Tristana pretty good, but uh, they're just going to have to back out, and that is absolutely horrible. A three-man ult right there, but uh, Tama getting chunked, blows that ult almost immediately to get favorable positioning. Crawley's actually doing a lot of damage, but with that Archangel's, Atomic goes down, and this is a really, really bad situation for Lazuria. Ted Stickles goes down as well. Valkyrie picking up that kill. Slush is in a horrible position. He's going to dash over that wall, but will he be able to pick up Arknight? No, that ult going off picks up Slush, and Digester actually being in the bush with zero HP just about. Delandra, the only one to survive that with any form of health at all. And, uh, yeah, that was the, uh, that was the turnaround that maybe Reflex has been looking for. Valkyrie checking Baron, going to get that timing out. Not that they didn't know it ahead of time, but, uh, you know, that might have been okay for Lazura. They are going to be able to go back and uh, buy all the items that they want. We're going to see what uh, what Gragas opts to do with his 1,200 gold right now. He can't really sell anything. You don't want to sell those Dorans quite yet, as they do give so much additional health, and by so much I mean 100, but apparently that is worth it. They're going to try to go over here. They did not have Dragon Time, unfortunately, so a missed timer there. And, you know... Lazura had solidified enough of an advantage so that after that loss, trying to push down the mid turret for uh, for reflex, they're still they're still almost even. I'd still give a little bit of an advantage to reflex as Prawley has uh, actually not picked up a hat either. Went for that guardian angel and just so tanky with enough sustain from Woda, from actually double Woda combined with Rumbles. 
That is just going to make their team, like, have ridiculous amounts of sustain. A little bit of lag, I thought, was going on there. I know the servers have been having issues today. But uh, Nubish is just going to swing around the side, try to pick off any wards, give them as much of an advantage from wards as they can. Uh, CV goes down on blue. They will have timing for that. Atomic going to assist Sushi. Actually, the ult goes down from Rumble, and that was max range ulti there. But the blue actually... Wow, did he steal that? Rumble stole the blue buff with his ult. Oh my goodness. I'm a little bit slow at noticing that. I should have picked that up almost immediately. But uh, yeah, my bad. We'll, uh, we'll see what I can do there. The equalizer is down for Rumble. So one less ult, but one more blue buff. So I think that was an advantageous trade there for Reflex, and they're just taking the small advantages right now. They know that they threw away their lead with that horrible fight at Baron, and right now it's back to even. Uh, 2k gold actually advantage, 2.2 for Lazura right now, so <laughs> this game is ridiculously close. I don't even know who to call it for. I mean, the gold advantage, the item advantage even going for Lazura, but uh, just a better overall team comp, I feel like, for Reflex, especially this guy right here. No hat quite yet. If he were to get that hat right now, that would just... Uh, that'd be a little bit GG, because there's so much CC surrounding him. It's basically a protect the Prolly game. And if you can protect both Prolly and Arknight, checking out Arknight's items, he pretty much has everything the Jester has. The Jester, one BF sword up. But it's actually, yeah, uh, Banshee's Veil built on Arknight instead of going for that QSS. QSS is kind of the cheap... Uh, version of Banshee's Veil. And now Reflex with the advantageous bear position kind of being put in Lazura's position from earlier. Not quite popping the Banshee's Veil there on Arknight, but uh... Yeah, like I said, both teams just positioning. Dragon is up, so we may see one team try to back off and go for Dragon. If uh, Lazura thinks Baron is a lost cause, they will cycle down there, and even one member could split push a little bit. Slush getting out of there, not wanting to get caught again. He did have an epic face check that went horribly right around blue buff, blue buff earlier on in the game. They're going to try to three-man Dragon, or three-man Baron, with the fourth and fifth coming up from behind. And that is going to be the Baron attempt. They already have it down to about uh, a little bit less than half health. And after that first horrible, horrible Baron attempt, they're going to be really squeamish right here. I feel like they could have done a lot more damage to Baron. And uh, still been in an okay situation, but uh, they went ahead and backed off there. Now they're going to move back in on it, and with as much sustain as they have late game, they can attempt this a couple more times before it becomes just not a good idea anymore. A lot of positioning uh, just going on with uh, a little bit better positioning actually here for Lazura. See, one of the bad things about being blue side, I was talking about the uh, imbalance there, which is actually pretty bad. It's actually Atomic got shunked right there. The GP ult forcing the flash out there. Five man ulti going off immediately. Gralic is getting popped. A lot of Morris is going to jump in there, but he is so taking. He's going to flash out without dying. And uh, yeah, they just picked up Slush, but uh, Ted Stickles going down to about, uh, yeah, 300 health. He's going to have to go back, and that, that is the advantage they needed to Dragon, actually. Every single member low. Poor Reflex, with the exception of Arc Knight, but. Uh, Actually, Ted Stickles is going to try. He does have sight on Baron. He may choose to jump in there and get the smite. Will he choose to jump in there? No, the Baron goes down to Reflex, but with a horrible position. Arknight forced to jump out. Talandra is taking zero damage. Nubish might go down there, but Talandra is getting chunked. The uh, Archangels is uh, good enough, but uh, wow. That was horrible, and uh, almost an ace. The Jester actually running away with sub-100 health. He got out of there so fast. Being a sheriff, I don't imagine he would have shot him before he got out of dodge, but uh, yeah, just healing off red buff. Gonna go ahead and take that, and they might actually cycle down there. He should probably go back, as right now, yeah, Lana Morris pushing in on the base, but uh, not a whole lot he's gonna be able to do, and uh, his roles have been sufficiently reversed right now to that perfect initiate by Lana Morris. Arknight actually picking up the. Uh, mirroring turrets, so 5 to 6 actually, the turrets as this turret is up for Lazura, so Lazura right now solidly on the back foot, and one of the things I don't like about Gragas, he has gone ahead and picked up that Zanya, so he's sitting pretty at 534 
AP, but do we see the hat completed? No, actually going for more of a utility build. Hat would be the last item in this. Going for an Abyssal Scepter as well. So going for defense as well as offense. Has plenty of AP and even getting the aura off of that Woda. Do we see a Woda complete? For Reflex, no, or for uh, Lazura, no, I don't see one unless I'm just totally blind. Magic Resist going on the... Uh, on Ted Sickles, as he knows, probably is kind of the playmaker right now. And with so many AoE stuns, this is a solid late game composition. Nothing like a, you know, a Trindamir or Vayne in here, but probably just scaling so, so hard. Already with 400 AP without a death cap, they're going to be able to take Lazura's blue, and Lazura right now, they just have to make the play. They are in the position that uh, Reflex was earlier, as uh, Reflex will be knocking on their mid turret at any moment. This game is at 45 minutes, so long, but uh, has not disappointed after that epic Baron fight, which is, wow, just look at Arknight clear that minion wave. He is almost at full build. If we check his lifesteal right now, I believe I can hit that with C. Yes, yeah, spell vamp, actually, yeah, lifesteal is solidly at 15%. That's the three from the mastery with the 12. From the Vampire Acceptor, so 40 AP from something right now. I guess it is, yeah, it is that Woda. 70, actually, that's gonna bring him up to 70. I'm not sure where he's getting up 40 AP from. Or maybe that, yeah, that was the double Woda overlap, so. Minion takes down the top turret, KSing Arc Knight. Luckily, this is not Dota, and that does not give any sort of advantage. Nubish got chunked there a little bit, but uh, if I had to pick somebody to put chunk on, it would be the support, as that does allow both damage carries to be uh, at maximum effectiveness. And really, Nubish is just around for that ult. He lands that ult, and that's kind of GG. Ted Sickle's a little bit out of position. Is down a couple hundred health, actually more like 500 health. A lot of wars is aggressively positioning, and uh, yeah, the shield from Jen is not going to be enough to protect this turret, but the creep clearing is at its finest. This is going to be the play. What will we see happen here? Lazura is backing out, but they know they have to go in on this. Will we see the GPL? Once the GPL does go off, that is going to signal a solid invade or engage for Lazura. Tornado queued up there by Atomic, but uh, nobody's able to go in here. So much wave clearing. You have uh, Prolly and uh, Valkyrie just able to clear waves so, so fast, along with the barrels there from Slush. A much more single target team against the AoE comp. The ult goes down, the Equalizer doing so much massive damage. Slush falling down, actually, he zong it at a perfect moment. He's gonna go in there, trying to get as much damage done as humanly possible. Taladra will fall, that is the GG. Only Ted Stickles is gonna get out of there. He's gonna go down eventually as well. He gets caught by Lottomores. Valkyrie gonna pick up the kill there. Nubish takes out that turret, and that is the GG. The ace coming out. Solid performance there from Leaf Reflex. After uh, warming up their pitching arms, throwing the game at that Baron attempt, they have managed to pull it out there with the ace. 50 seconds down on every member of Reflex, or of, uh, of Lazura. Reflex will be moving in here for the end of the game, taking out both Nexus turrets. This is going to be uh, the Nexus and the GG, so... Well played by both teams, almost giving it away, but uh, pulling it back. So congratulations to Reflex. Wards going down from Nubish, and wow, epic game. Thanks for watching, guys. Props to uh, Reflex and Lazure for letting me off this game. If you liked what you saw, go ahead and like, subscribe, whatever you want to do. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. GG.